Hello everyone. So in this video of ANSYS for Civil Engineering, we'll start analyzing a simply supported beam. We will take a section of an uh, steel and it will be of around 40 mm by 40 mm. You can make it of any dimension, but we will make it of 40 mm by 40 mm and it will be a one meter length beam. Okay. We'll give it the supports and then we will see what kind of uh, displacement deformations or we can say the bending stresses will be there. Okay. So for this, I have opened here the ANSYS 14.5 workbench as the ANSYS is kind of a heavy software. So I'm using a kind of an old version that is going to be 14.5. Upon opening, you can see there are kind of uh, analysis systems on the left hand side here, like design assessment, fluid flow, model response spectrum, rigid dynamics and all. And on bottom to that, we are having component systems. So for this, we are going to use an analysis system named that is static structural because our beam is going to be analysis on that basis. So I'll double click it. See, this video is kind of a very uh, bulky software. It sometimes takes time to open up. Okay. So if you are uh, using a computer with low configuration, be patient. Okay. So there's a box in front of us on the right hand side. At the first, it is having engineering data. If I double click it. So upon clicking the structural data, we will have a pop up box. Uh, at by default, it is uh, having selected as structural steel. The structural steel is already selected. Okay, uh, you can add any kind of material from here. Uh, it is having an XML file, database file that is containing the general materials. It is having all the materials. In the later lectures, I will tell you how we can add more materials from that database. Okay, so this point of time, the default characteristics of the structural steel is already there. As you can see, Young's modulus is 2 into 10 to the power 5 pascals and something and so on. Okay, so you can uh, do whatever you like. Okay, if you want to change something like bulk modulus or shear modulus or Young's modulus, you can change it on your own. Okay, so this is quite as easy as that. I'm not going to change anything. I want to keep the default. So I'll just uh, update the project. I'll clip the update process so that whatever it is, it will update to the project. Then on the top, we are having written to project. I'll return to the project. So our first step that is engineering data is already done. Okay, so need not to worry about it. Then I'll click on geometry. Now the geometry will start up a modeler. So this will take some time. So when I double click it, you can see at the left hand corner, it is having a uh, uh, message starting design modeler. Now it will take some time. Depending on your system, it will take some time. It can be around seconds. It can be around minutes. Okay. So uh, I'm going to design this kind of a beam, a simply supported beam with a hinge at one place and the roller at one place. Okay. It is having a four kilonewton per meter of a uniformly distributed load. We will see how these things are going to work. Okay. Now I'll minimize it. Now, oh, the modeler is there. It is asking for the units. Just click millimeters and I'll press okay. I'll type millimeters. Okay. Now, at the first on the left hand side, we are having sketching and modeling. On the modeling, you can select any plane that you want to draw in. It is having X here in the horizontal direction, Y in the vertical, and Z is the another 90 degree to it. I'll take the XY plane, okay? And then there is an option here that is look at face. That is, I want to look at that plane. So I'll click this and I'll look at that plane, okay? Now I'll go to sketching, okay? And then on sketching, we are having a different options here on the draw option. So I am having a rectangle. I'll click on rectangular. My rectangle is going to be around 40 mm by 40. So you can see there is a scale here. You can also snap to the grid and uh, with the help of the scale, you can also draw it, but I'll tell you some more uh, specific or you can say more a concise way of doing it. Okay. So I'll just draw a randomly a box. Okay. Now the positions, the dimension are not good. So I'll go into the dimensions. And then the general is selected. I'll click on this line and I'll drag it around here. Okay. Similarly, I'll right click on another adjust side and I'll drag it here. Now you can see these two dimensions are here. I'll write 50, sorry, 40. It is going to be 40 mm by 40 mm. You can make it any kind of thing. You, know, you can make it 300 mm or whatsoever you want. Oh, sorry. I'll write 40. Now press enter. And on to the top, I am having generate option. We always have to generate whenever we make a change in the geometry. I'll click on generate. Okay. So this is done. Okay. And now the thing is that we need to extrude it. We want to extrude this box up to the one meter. So I'll on the top, we are having extrude option. I'll click on extrude. Now it is asking which geometry you want to extrude. So click on your geometry. Okay. The whole the geometry will select it because this is a one box and just click on apply. Okay. Now it is asking what kind of depth up to which uh, length you want 
it to be extruded. Okay, so I'll write thousand mm because mm is selected, so one meter thousand mm. Okay, I'll press it. Okay, just click it and press okay, and then click generate because our now geometry is done. I'll click on generate. It will be generated. If you want to see from the perspective view at the right hand side, it is having a gizmo, and on the gizmo, it is having a simple dot. If you click on dot, the 3D view will be there. Okay, so this is how you can make a simplest beam. Now, this is just model. Okay, we need to put all the things that is supports load into another step. So just control hit control and as save it. Okay, I'll save it on desktop as this simply support it and hit okay so this is our uh, model it's all done okay i can just minimize it or i can cross it whatever you want it to be okay so i'll be back at my project now you can see the geometry is also having a right tick in front of it now i'll double click this model okay now this is our uh, another step next step when i'll click on model you'll wait some time for a second there will be a window and it will start processing uh, something so until that window comes up wait okay be patient you can see this it is the overall process attached status is there it is attaching our model actually to the engine so this is the this is actually actually the main window where we are going to do the all those things okay so this is our window okay this is our model and on the left hand side we are having a bunch of things okay so first of all i'll generate a mesh I already told you in e tabs and uh, lectures and safe lectures so what is a mesh mesh is actually for the finite element analysis the meshes are kind of a small cross sections that are going to be analyzed properly in a specific manner so i'll go into the mesh okay then the moment i click mesh there are a bunch of details on the sizing i'll take a element size of 20 mm you can take it any okay you can uh, you can take any size and you can start uh, Following it, okay. I'll take a 20 mm mesh and I'll right click on mesh and then click generate mesh, okay. So it will generate a mesh and it will take around a couple of seconds. So you can see a mesh is generated here, okay. Now on the static structural uh, portion, I'll right click insert and I'm going to insert a fixed support, okay. You can figure fix the support or you can give the displacement or all that, okay. So I'll right click on static structural insert and I'll click on a fixed support. No, I want a fixed support at one of the end. So I'll click on fixed support. Now it is asking for the geometry. Now go to this edge selection and select this edge. Okay. And come here and hit apply. Okay. So there will be a fixed support at that position. Okay. Similarly, we need to go at the far end and give it there a displacement. Okay. So I'll just um, take my rotation command and I'll rotate it like this. Okay. Oh, sorry. Like this. Okay. So go on to the edge selection, select this edge, or you can go to just right click insert and then go to displacement and that edge will, then that support will be automatically assigned to that thing. You can select the edge in the earlier stretch, or you can also select the edge after that. Thing. Okay. So, cause it is a ruler support. So the movement in uh, directions like Y and uh, the X will be constrained, but in the Z direction, direction it will be free. It can move in the Z direction. Okay. So for the X, we will write constant. That is not going to be changed. And on Y, it is also going to be constant. And kind of a Z, it will be free. Okay. So you can just do it by yourself. So these are the supports that how we can assign it now talking about the load okay so take this face support from here select the top face okay and right click here insert and then you'll go to force okay i want to insert a force it is asking for the magnitude here my force is 4 newton per meter i'll write 4000 because the newton is the unit you can always change the units from here units and you can change it from here I'll write 4000 now it is having an up direction you can change it if you click here that is it is asking for change direction so there are there are two arrows here so you can just click it and you will have a down arrow you can also write minus 4000 for this i'll hit apply now the force is down so the modeling part is almost done okay so the loading part is almost done i'll go to solution 
solutions means we are uh, telling the uh, answers that what kind of solutions we need so i'll right click on solution insert i'll go deformation i want a deformation i dar directional deformation okay so i'll click on it and on the orientation i'll select y i want deformation on the y direction okay so i'll select the y now simply i'll right click here again insert and then i want a stress diagram so i'll click on stress and there is having equivalent you stresses you can take any of this as maximum shear maximum principal stress normal stress or whatsoever i'll take the equivalent stress okay and it isn't having no direction it will be quite as easy as that so at this moment of time i'm taking only this two of the results i'll right click on solution and then click on solve okay and i'll wait till the solution done okay the solution is going on at the bottom that is ansys workbench solution status okay we'll wait till the uh, solution gets done okay okay the so solution is done it uh, take, took around 10 to 15 seconds so when you click on directional deformation it will have the directional deformation that it, it is going around minus 1.2 to uh, 6 mm the units are written here mm downward in this blue region that is in the middle as we know the it is going to be deflected in the middle okay uh, if, uh, if i click on the equivalent stress the stress will be here you can see okay we know the stresses will be maximum at the top and bottom so it is having around 46.895 at the top and same at the bottom okay and as we know we are having a neutral axis in the middle and neutral axis generally have zero stress and strain so you can see there is a blue line in the center and it is having around a value of 0.05 there are many ways through which you can uh, study this results you can go on to this maximum if i click the maximum a maximum probe will be there that is what kind of maximum stress um, is happening and where it is happening so it is happening somewhere in the downward if i click this minimum it will give us the minimum that is at the uh, you can say the neutral axis same goes with the other things also if you go on to directional deformation it will give the minimum and maximum okay so uh, there are either ways you can if you want to see the mesh you can click on this option and you can click show elements so the mesh will be there if you want a cross section you can also take the cross section here at the bottom we are having section planes so click this and just cut it from the place where you want to see it a section cut will be there okay you can just zoom it and you can see the blue zone that is you can see the values from the right the zero value will be at the center and that let's say if you want the want to see the stress at a specific point then you can you can go into this prop and you can click anywhere you want just say, for example i want the stress at this point i'll click it it is 40 point uh, 40.139 if i click on this red line it is around 2 or if i go here it is around 0.7965 so at the neutral axis the stress is going to be so this is how the analysis of a simply supported beam can be done okay i hope you have understood all the things you can do different things uh, in this case you can right click on uh, model sorry insert and you can insert a construction geometry and the construction geometry i can insert a path let's say i want this stress for a specific path let me disable this section plane okay uh, uh by the meaning of path that i need to be i need to be concerned with the only one line if you want the stress along only a one direction or one line you can use this so it is asking for the location okay so i'll click on a edge and i'll click this edge and i'll hit apply at the start okay then i'll go at the far edge of the top and here i'll click apply so there is a path now okay so i'll right click on solution insert stress equivalent stress but this time at the equivalent stress i'll select the path okay and the path is simply the path that we have made okay so i'll just right click and click evaluate all results so now i can see there is a stress result for only the upper portion okay you can see the maximum is in between you can see the graph at the bottom that how the stress is going to be um, generated okay it will be maximum in between somewhere here okay it is around 48.845 mega pascal okay so this is how you can do it you can also draw this path in the middle at the neutral axis okay by just giving it the uh, values of path here okay so this is going to be that quite easy